Hi, my name is Ken Fogel. Welcome to my video of an imaginary interview with Microsoft. A few weeks ago, I decided to apply for a job at Microsoft, one I'm fairly certain I'm not really qualified for, but what the heck, it's worth a try and I'm looking for new challenges. I haven't been interviewed for a job since 1980, so I thought to practice, I'd interview myself. And here's the video. Please feel free to leave me any comments, um, any criticisms in the comments after the video. I promise I won't cry too much, depending on what you say. So let's begin with my imaginary interview with Microsoft. My first question is, to begin with, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I have been a computer science instructor for the last 30 years. I work at Dawson College in Montreal, where we have a program called Computer Science Technology, where over a three-year period, we train our students to be software developers. Our focus is code, code, code. Our responsibility is to ensure that our students upon graduation are able to enter the workforce as a junior programmer and be productive on the very first day. Over my years in the program, I've taught courses in networking, I've taught courses in word processing, in spreadsheet, in a range of languages from Pascal, Perl, PHP. I've taught Windows, I've taught operating systems. But for the last 15 years, I've specialized in Java programming. I teach students from little skills all the way up to complex skills how to write code in Java. Next question is, how would you describe your Java skills and your cloud skills? Well, I think my Java skills are pretty good, except for their circular nature. As I've already mentioned, I've taught courses with students who know very little about programming and taking them to a point where they are in teams developing what I would consider fairly complex systems and then starting over again. So I've never written code for to the level of complexity of say a, an Amazon, a Microsoft or a Google. What I have done though is trained the developers who work in that environment. Cloud. Well, that's still relatively new to me. I've only poked at it a bit, and there's certainly a lot more I have to learn. This might sound unusual, looking for a position in cloud advocacy with little real cloud benefit or cloud experience. However, I feel strongly that I am capable of acquiring the knowledge needed to acquire it fairly rapidly and to be able to present what I discover in a way that benefits, well, in this case, Microsoft, I hope. Have you presented at conferences? Well, starting six years ago, I've been presenting annually at Oracle's Java One, now Code One conference on a range of topics from uh, Java and education, NetBeans. I even have a small bit of stand-up about Java villains that I had a lot of fun putting together. I've talked about robotics. So I've presented on a wide range of topics. I've also had the good fortune of presenting at ApacheCon. And this past summer, I was at J. Crete. Next question I have for myself is, do you maintain a blog? What do you write about? Well, I've maintained a blog for a number of years, and typically what I write about are uh, tutorials concerning certain aspects of coding that I think are important to my student or to any student learning the language. So whether it's uh, recently uh, an article about how most people are using the scanner class in Java incorrectly. Um, and topics, how to convert Maven projects to Eclipse. So I've written a wide range of articles. There's even a few book reviews, even a bit of uh, how did I get here? A little, you know, 
tiny biography of myself that I hope you'll read. That blog has been important to me and it's one of the ways that I communicate. And of course, there's this YouTube channel where I've also done some video blogs. I'm still getting the hang of it. My next question is, are you active on social media? Well, I believe that social media is an important part of being a developer. I've been on Twitter for some years and Twitter for me is my primary form of communication or my, my primary way of keeping in touch with the community. I'm not interested in following people who want to tell me about their politics or what they had for breakfast. If you want to know what I had for breakfast, uh, you got to follow me on Facebook. That's what I use it for. Instead, I use Twitter kind of as my replacement for Stack Overflow. Crafting a question in 280 characters allows you to get to the point really quickly. And there are a lot of amazing people out there who are more than happy to tell me uh, what I'm doing wrong, tell me, even if I don't know it, that what I'm doing is wrong. And so it becomes an amazing learning experience. Yes, I'm on Facebook. Here's where I'll, you'll see my opinions and you'll probably decide you don't want to be my Facebook friend based on them. There's LinkedIn. Uh, still not sure what to do with that, but I collect followers there. And then there's Instagram. Uh, every now and then I put a picture up. Uh, and then there's Pinterest. I'm still not sure what to do with that. So yes, I am on social media and I am frequently tweeting under the handle Omniprof. Next question I have for myself is, do you work on or publish any open source software? So first of all, I have to be upfront. I have never worked on an open source project. I filed the odd bug report, but other than that, I haven't been directly involved in it. I do, however, have over 200 different small projects publicly available on GitLab that I use in my courses that I am constantly updating to take into account the latest technology. Uh, as an example, um, for this coming semester, I'm going to be going through all my enterprise code and replacing references to Java EE to Jakarta EE and ensuring that it represents the most up-to-date versions for my students. One small project that I am proud of is a project involving the GoPi Go 3 robot car. This is a small robot platform that uses a Raspberry Pi. What I did was take an unusual approach, at least in my mind, in how I wanted to control my robot. Rather than writing a piece of software that would drive the robot around, instead I wrote the control system as a Java Enterprise application that I run an enterprise server. I use WebSockets to send a stream of data back to a client, whether it's a browser on a tablet, a phone, or a desktop, and allow you to drive the car around from your phone, but keeping all the intelligence in the Raspberry Pi. Got a Raspberry Pi 4 this past summer. I'm excited to see what I can do with a bit more memory space. <clears throat> Next question is, are you active in the Java community? Well, it began when I started speaking at Code One that I was given the designation of NetBeans Dream Team member. And that was primarily because in my writing I promoted NetBeans and continue to promote it as the ideal um, IDE for education. Last year, based on my writings and some other things I've been involved in, which I'll mention later, I was given the designation of Java Champion from Oracle. That was a very proud moment, especially since just a few months earlier I had done a presentation which I've mentioned about why there were more Java villains than Java champions. Pretty certain I was never going to become a Java champion, but I was fairly certain I was a good villain. Well, they called my bluff. A couple months ago, Microsoft reached out to me and designated me a community leader and because of that, invited me down to Microsoft Ignite at Orlando, 
where I had a chance to, well, get back into the Microsoft world after being in the Java world for so long. This past November, I decided to continue pushing what I can do and where I can most influence the Java community when I ran for a seat on the executive committee of the Java community process. And quite frankly, to my surprise, I won the election. I now sit at the same table with a range of major corporations reviewing the changes requested of the language, having some input into the direction of these changes and just getting a sense on how a major language is managed and organized. It's really exciting to be part of this group and I'm looking forward to whatever I can contribute to it. My next question is, is there anything else about what you do now that we should know about? Well, here's where I want to talk about DOSCON. DOSCON is an annual software development conference run at Dawson College in Montreal. It began four years ago, initially called NetBeans Day, but last year renamed to DOSCON to give it a more general uh, approach and uh, general in terms of people considering the conference. This conference is a free one-day conference. Dawson College has been amazing in supporting the conference and making the facilities available to the conference at no cost. The fact that the conference occurs when there's no students in the school, it happens between the fall and winter semester, and this year it's falling on January 10th. That of course means that I'm in a college that's fully staffed without any students. So a couple hundred convention people coming around is no strain on the college's resources. Amazing support from them. I've also had over the years the ability to attract some of the, the finest developers, the finest advocates to come to Montreal, to come to speak to our students who make up about a third of the audience, and the other two thirds of the audience are local developers a way for a range of companies to connect with the development community here in Montreal, which is maybe the most vibrant in all of Canada. So this conference is going on. This is its fourth year. Uh, we even have two speakers from Microsoft coming this year. So this has been my, my little side project, uh, a way to encourage the local community, my students, Encourage them to begin a lifelong period of learning. It doesn't end when you graduate. Here's your first conference. It's free, but the level of speakers are as good as you will find at any conference anywhere in the world. And I want to especially thank those people who have volunteered to come to Montreal and talk to our students. Next question here says, do you have any experience leading or managing a team? So in the 21 years that I fulfilled the role of chairperson, I've had to work with a faculty team of anywhere from 21 to nine, depending on the years enrollment goes up and down. Right now we're at about 14 faculty. Now, I wasn't their manager. That role is assumed by the dean. My role though, was to ensure that students received what was required, that the facilities met the needs of the program, that the students were as best as we could getting the level of ed education that they expected. If a student had a problem, typically they would see the department chairperson as their first point of contact to get any issues resolved. Faculty they would come to the chair to learn about what other resources might be available to them in the college to express what they need, uh, whether it's in the way of facilities or in equipment. And it was pretty much my job to find a way to make that happen. I did this for 21 years and I enjoyed every minute of it, but I did decide two years ago that when I turned 65, it was probably time for a new faculty member to take over the role. I had been elected every one of those 21 years to the role of chairperson, 
but I decided now is the time to step aside. We have some really excellent faculty. I've been replaced by an amazing person who's running the department, certainly far better than I ever had. And so I felt now is the time to look for, well, other challenges. That might explain why I'm doing this video and why I decided to apply for a position as a principal cloud advocate at Microsoft. It says here, have you read the job description and what do you believe you will bring to this position? Well, in reading the, dis uh, the decision, I see that there is a lot I can bring because the nature of the decision is communicating. That's what I've done in the classroom. Um, I am one who is, well, animated in my presentations. I'm personal. I equate the things that happen to events in, in my life and events in the world. I make everything uh, accessible as much as I can. I love to talk. I'm the kind of person who at a conference, I will turn to someone and start discussing what's just been happening. And what's always amazed me about these conferences is that in most cases, the person sitting next to me wants to talk to me as well. I will talk with anyone. I believe when I look at the list of responsibilities, I can carry them out. There's certainly a lot of talk about um, travel and so on, and I'm looking forward to that possibility. I'm also looking and excited about the, the research aspect, not research from you know an academic point of view, but in learning the range of technologies that developers are using and finding how to make, in this particular instance, the Microsoft Cloud, an important component of that problem solving. Finally, any last comments we should know about? Well, this is the toughest part because this is where you probably, if you've managed to keep any interest of me, possibly lose it at this point. For instance, I, I realize that the position shows Vancouver as the home office, but I have to be honest with you, I'm not interested in leaving Montreal. My family, including my grandchildren, all live in Montreal, and my wife and I are not looking to leave. Travel, though, isn't an issue, though I'd prefer to be no more than about a quarter of my time away, but it's an adventure. I'm always up for adventures. Hence this application. One shortcoming that I am most disappointed in myself is the fact that I don't speak French. Seems unusual. I was born here in Quebec, but I'm probably of the last generation that could find a career that didn't require French. My wife, a retired nurse, also didn't have the need during her working life to speak a lot of French. One thing, though, that my wife and I did do is ensure that our children went to French immersion, my grandchildren go to French immersion, and my children at least work in French, and I know that my family will stay in Quebec as long as the coming generations speak French. Finally, there's the issue of when am I available? I would prefer not to leave Dawson College suddenly. I have and I'm scheduled to teach, as I've mentioned, the, the major project courses for the coming term. This will mean that uh, I have finished all of my academic responsibilities based on, on the nature of my course load by about the second week of May, at which point I would be available full time for well, any opportunity, depending on what comes out of this. I would certainly spend my time between now and then acquiring the skills, uh, something I could do part-time, who knows. I realize the issue of not relocating, don't know how important the French is, not wanting to be available until mid-May, probably puts a damper in things, but I've got nothing to lose at this point, and I think I am conceivably someone you will want working for you. So, thanks for watching the video. If you have any suggestions, as I mentioned, 
Leave them in the comments section. If your company is looking for an unusual employee, feel free to reach out to me. My delusions of grandeur that led me to apply at Microsoft can easily be delusions of grandeur to work at your company. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.